three men, lost in the depths of outer space, have a wish for their vessel to be led home in the starry skies they sail. But what appears to be a ray of hope is a remote asteroid that aligned its purpose as an allegi. That's not so similar to what we'd expect from a futuristic landing within the Twilight Zone. Allegi is definitely one of the more intriguing and spectacle-heavy premises that come out of the Twilight Zone, and one that I'd highly suggest listening to as intensely as you can when viewing this episode for yourself. Taking place in the 22nd century, three astronauts in winter jacket-esque spacesuits decide to land on a remote asteroid that's floating in some far corner of the universe. But when stepping out of their ship with the wish to be returning back home, the asteroid offers an odd essence to a familiar world of Earth, or at least one they learned about and are 655 million miles from. However, the difference between what they know and what they're about to see is that, for some peculiar purpose, the world around them is frozen in time. In every scene they step through, they see the same thing. People stationary as statues and seemingly, but maybe not, alive. It's a different world to say the least, and one where the answers aren't seen until the second half. And around that point, the astronauts are walking along a neighborhood and considering where they could reside until an elderly man named Mr. Wickwire, who were introduced to in a camera zoom in prior to this, appears on the front porch and invites them inside. Apparently, he's an android who fulfills the role of a caretaker and was programmed to wake up when there were new inhabitants and be a godmother of sorts to make their wishes come true. In a way, Wickwire preserves human culture via Happy Glades, as he calls this procedure, and was sent to reside there over 200 years earlier to ensure that those who've passed on are in their most happy states and aren't disturbed. And the device he uses is a drink that the astronauts naively consume that makes them lose any control of their own selves, and neither has an antidote nor a way to prevent the drink from giving off its fullest and painless effect. And even when the astronauts didn't mean to cause harm, and Wickwire does notice that, he sits on an elevated throne and, through a prior film dissolve effect, dusts the now exhibit-worthy astronauts as if they were returning from the nightmare we just endured. It's no surprise to hear that it took four days as opposed to three to shoot for this episode, as it did take more time to move equipment due to how many locations they took advantage of. In addition to being one of the many examples of certain production sets and forbidden planet props and reconstructions being reused in more than one episode. But the central part to the illusion were the tableaus of real actors having to stay still on screen for as long as humanly possible. But then again, even with their efforts, the creative team and director Douglas Hayes were aware that a person would naturally make small movements. So, to compromise, the camera moved too, whether it would track or pan in all sorts of directions. The episode itself did capture all three of the astronauts passing through a man's farmland, a man fishing by a river, and in the middle of an inauguration for a new mayor. And when separated, they did walk through a poker game in a downtown area, a couple dancing in their hotel room and that was backed by a mariachi band, and a tented area where a beauty pageant was being held. And to me, it brought little awareness to how the feat was created for the camera and kept to its unsettling mood. All of our performers had their moment to absorb the scenery and later understood their purpose for being in each other's company. But to me, it stood out when reflecting all my favorite episodes for how bold and disturbing it was, let alone an episode that was backed by Nathan Van Cleve's score, well-staged tableau scenes, and a commentary on trusting that gut feeling and the importance of communicating with unfamiliar faces. Alleji is, in this episode's definition, a preservation of life and death that sustains the destinies of these astronauts and its place in the Twilight Zone as forever eternal. <laughs> 